Question 3. 2-bromo-2-methylpentane is heated with potassium hydroxide dissolved in ethanol. Two structural isomers are formed. We'll look at this in a minute, but the first part of the question says, state the meaning of the term structural isomers. So a structural isomer is where you have the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. So a substance with the same molecular formula, but a different structural formula. Instead of the word structural, you could replace structural with the word displayed or skeletal. But it's most common to say it's a compound or a substance with the same molecular formula, but different st structural formula. So what would be an example of that? Well, there's three kinds of structural isomers. There's something called a chain isomer, there's something called a position isomer, and there's something called a functional group isomer. So the first kind, the chain isomer, is where you shorten the chain and introduce a branch. So say, for example, if you had C4H10, you can draw that in two different ways. You could either have C4H10 as butane, or you could shorten the chain and introduce a branch and have it as 2-methylpropane, a chain isomer. Or the second kind is that you can change the position of a functional group. A functional group is what identifies the compound, something in there that you see that identifies it. So say, for example, propane 1-ol, propan 1-ol, you could change to propan 2-ol. So you're keeping it as a propane, three in a line, you're not shortening the, the branch and introducing a chain, That's not that would be chain isomer. This is position isomer, where you're changing the position of the OH, the functional group, from propan 1-ol to propan 2-ol. The key is it cha the number changes the position of the ol, the OH group, the alcohol group. Or, say for example, you could change the functional group. So you could change something maybe from having, um, uh, say for example, uh, a ketone into an aldehyde, where you've got a C double bond O, you could change it from the middle of a chain into the end of a chain, so from a ketone to an alcohol. Another way of doing it would be, say for example, if you had C4H8, you could do that as um, introduce a double bond, so it could be uh, butetoene, say for example, but then if you draw it as a cyclic compound, it can be cyclobutane, um, so ene to ene, and that's a functional group change, a functional group isomer. Now then, let's have a look at the mechanism for one of the isomers. So, what's a clue in here? Well, heated, heat and ethanol, sometimes called ethanolic solution. So, if there's heat or warmth and ethanol or ethanolic solution, it's something called an elimination reaction, where something is removed, eliminated. The other kind is if it's cold in water or aqueous, meaning water, cold aqueous solution or cold water, then you get something called nucleophilic substitution. But this one is warm ethanol. Let's have a look what happens. First of all, the potassium hydroxide, you never include the potassium part. The potassium part is something called a spectator ion. Similarly, if it had sodium hydroxide, you wouldn't include the sodium part. It's the hydroxide part that's involved in the mechanism. Let's do a quick spoiler. An OH minus, the minus can go anywhere really. I don't really mind where it goes. It actually does go on the O, but as long as you've got OH minus, the minus somewhere around here, and as long as you've got the lone pair on the O, then that will suffice. But you don't involve the potassium at all, and similarly sodium hydroxide, you wouldn't involve the sodium. OH minus with a lone pair of electrons on the O. Now you need to draw 2-bromo-2-methylpentane. Let's have a look at that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it is pentane, 5 in a line. The longest chain is 5. All single bonds, so we've got the pentane bit right. 2-methyl. Well, if I start labelling from the left, 1 carbon, 2 carbons. There's the methyl group on carbon number 2. And on the same carbon, 2-bromo, I've got uh, a Br on number 2. So carbon number 1, carbon 2. There's carbon 2, it's got a methyl group, and it's got a bromo group, a Br, a bromine atom. Okay, now, the curly arrow comes from the lone pair on the O of the OH-, and that attacks an H. Now, which H does it attack? Well, you go from the C, so you go from the Br down to the C, along another C, 
and it's an H from the C connected, bonded to the CBR. So let's go through that again. I've got a CBR there. The neighbouring C there has an H, and it's that H that it goes for. Now, this 2-bromo-2-methylpentane doesn't know left from right, so I could go the other way and go to the right, from the BR down to the C and to a neighbouring C that way, and I could have that H as my one that it attacks. And that's why it says formation of one of the isomers and two structural isomers are formed. It depends whether that OH- and lone pair goes for that H on the C next to the CBR or whether it goes for that H on the C next to the CBR. It could go for either of those two. In this mechanism that I've drawn, it's going from this H and you need three arrows. So that OH- minus is going to bond with that H. What will we make? H, H, O, and we'll lose the minus because the curly arrow is coming away from the O. We're going to make water from that. This bond needs to break to allow that H and OH minus to form the water, and those electrons go between the two Cs, and we're going to end up with a double bond there, and the BR breaks off to allow that C to have a double bond here and one bond there and one bond there and retain the number of bonds. You actually don't get a mark for drawing what's formed, but we're going to get water. We're going to get CH2, a double bond to a C, CH3, CH2, CH2, CH3. Incidentally, if it did go for the other way, then that arrow there would go onto that H the bond would break and go into between those two carbons there, and the BR comes off. So in that case, you get CH3, C, CH3, carbon to carbon double bond, that H would be lost, CH, CH2, CH3.